بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد In every rakat of salah we implore we beseech Allah jalla jalaluhu to guide us to the straight path the sirat mustaqim ihdina sirat al mustaqim Oh Allah guide us onto the straight path there are many roads, there are many divergence, but the path that is the correct is only one. And a person who perceives any of the other roads to be correct will end up at the wrong destination. Worse than that is a person ending up in a place where he is in the position of compromise where there is danger for himself or his property. Shaitan, nafs, bad company, bad environment, these are inviting towards the road of destruction and annihilation. So the most important ibadah, in the most important dua, in the most important ingredient, hidayat, all of these are guiding us to one point. Sirat Mustaqim. Ya Allah, put me on that right road, the correct road, the road that will lead to you, Ya Allah. Naki Muhammad is saying, Ala qadri thubut al abdi ala sirat fi dunya, according to your establishment on the straight path in dunya proportionate to you being on the correct path يَكُونُ ثُبُوتُهُ عَلَى السِّرَاتِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ According to that will you be on the path in Akhira. You got it right here, you got it right there. And a person puts the GPS of Allah and His Rasul, the set nav takes you to Jannah. When you follow instructions, when you don't follow instructions, you can have the best GPS, you can have an autonomous vehicle, but when your destination is incorrect, you will not reach there. Fudail bin Ayaz rahimullah used to say, Man khaf Allah ta'ala, Man khaf Allah ta'ala lam yadurruhu ahad. That person who fears Allah, no one can harm him. وَمَنْ خَافَ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَعَلَىٰ لَمْ يَنْفَعْهُ أَحَدٍ And if you fear any being besides Allah, no one can benefit you. So having this GPS to Allah and you got it made, you got it right. The road to Allah, the destination to Allah, now it is covered. It can't be so easy, so straightforward. So it is covered. It is camouflaged. Hujibati naru bishahawat. Jahannam hellfire is encompassed. It is it is decoyed. It is camouflaged, surrounded by all kinds of desires and passions. Wa hujibati al jannatu bil makari. And jannat is surrounded and camouflaged by difficulties, hardships, undesirable things. The Sulah used to say, Ajaba limalla yasbiru ala nari dunya. Strange for the person who cannot be consoled, he cannot handle, he cannot tolerate baffling. This is quite baffling, this is surprising. This insan cannot handle and tolerate the fire of this world. ثُمَّ هُوَ يَسْتَهِينُ بِنَارِ الْآخِرَةِ Yet is ready to tolerate the fire of Akhira. We can't handle a small flame of this world. We can't handle a small difficulty of this world. How will we handle the difficulties of Akhira? So, dunya compared to Akhira, it's, it's trivial, it's, it's negligible, it's insignificant. So whether it's dunya or akhirat, we should never trivialize the rewards Jannah or the punishment Jahannam. We should never trivialize our good deeds, no matter how small it is, or bad deeds, no matter how small it is.
Never abandon any good deed, no matter how minute it is, or evil, don't think it to be small, no matter how insignificant it may be. Ibn Hajar Askalani Rahmatullah used to say, ينبغي للمرء ألا يزهد في قليل من الخير أياته It is necessary for a servant of Allah that any good that you get an opportunity to do it never leave it never abandon good no matter how small it may be ولا في قليل من الشر أن يجنبه and a small sin and error to stay far away from it. Don't ever consider anything to be small and insignificant, no matter how minute it may be. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَعْلَمُ الْحَسَنَةَ الَّتِي يَرْحَمُهُ اللَّهُ بِهَا He does not know which one good deed he done in his life that Allah will make his maghfirat. Allah will say because of this good deed, you removed a branch from the road, you are Jannati. You gave an animal water, you are Jannati. You gave a sick person medication, you are Jannati. You visited the Janaza, you are Jannati. And it may be that one small guna that Allah will decide hellfire for a person. So don't ever trivialize, this is a danger zone, it's a red zone. Unfortunately, the era we are in, we justify our guna, we find dalil, we find proofs, we find reasons to tackle the scholars, we find reasons to justify our ma'asiyah, the name of deen, in the name of sanctity, in the name of safety, we abandon deen, but actually we are destroying deen. Ibn Qayyim Rahmatullah used to say, كَيْفَ يَكُونُ عَاقِلًا مَنْ بَعَ الْجَنَّةَ بِشَهْوَةِ سَعَةٍ We consider some people intelligent and brilliant, but they are not intelligent and wise at all. <coughs> because how can you consider a person intellectual when he sells his Jannah for a moment of desire, that one moment where you can touch the hand, we can swipe your phone, we can send that message, we can plan the weekend out, that one moment of shahwat and desire, and you sold your Jannah. So we're talking about taqwa and an intention for taqwa, to be the friend of Allah in dunya and akhirah, that person who befriends Allah in this world, Allah will aid him and assist him in dunya and akhirah. Al akhillau yawma idin ba'dhum li ba'dhin adu. That in akhirat, bad company will become enemies and good company will rejoice. Illa al muttaqin. The muttaqeen will rejoice. People will say in Akhirah, Ya waylata laytani lam attakhidh fulanan khalila. When he sees the destruction and the devastation through his companions by following their advices and their way of life, he'll regret. See, if only I had not befriended so and so. وَيَوْمَ يَعَدُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ An oppressor will, will gnaw, he will bite, he will eat his hands, like a person is in problem, they start biting their nails. And eventually he will say, يَا لَيْتَنِي If only I did not choose companions that took me away from the Nabi of Allah, from the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person must check their companions because the fortunate have good companions and the deprived have bad companions. Whoever forsakes the, the, the reminder, the admonition of Allah, نُقَيِّذْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا Allah appoints for him shaitan. Who becomes his close and intimate companion for who are lahu qareen. 
So either we have to choose sides, Allah and His Rasul, Iblis, Nafs, Shaitan, bad company. A person should be checking all the time, otherwise we'll love in this dhaka and deception, we got it right, I got my Salat right, I got my Hajj right, I got this right here, but we're far from where we should be. They say Quran and Hadith warns us all the time, Allah is telling us, teaching us of lessons. وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورُ وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكُمْ Don't be deceived, don't get caught up in this deception. They say a person was walking once by a lady and she was with her child and he noticed the child and he said, wow, this is, this is a ugly child, this is the ugliest child I've ever seen in my life. They could not handle it because it was too much for him. So that the lady burst into tears and he left and this another lady came and seen her and came to console her and she said, what's the matter, what's wrong? She was sobbing, crying, I've been insulted, I've been terribly humiliated. So this other lady, she put her hand in her bag, she, she tried to console her, don't worry, here's some tissue, wipe your tears, you know how people are. Then she took out a banana and she said, here's a banana for the chump. Here's a banana for the chump. So dunya again and again we've been told it's ugly but we're not ready to accept it. We, we hang after it, we hold on next to it. This dunya, we, we hold in steadfast onto it. So to such an extent, وَقَيَّذْنَا لَهُمْ قُرَنَا that these bad companions, they are such that they will attract a person towards sinful acts and evil. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Don't listen to Quran, don't listen to Allah. قَالَ قَرِينُهُ رَبَّنَا مَا أَدْغَيْتُهُ I did not take him away, I didn't do anything. You'll complain, but Ya Allah, he did this and he told me this. And he at 12 o'clock at night said, let's go here on a Saturday night. And uh, on holidays he took me to this place here. And Ya Allah, he, he hooked me up. That, that's not gonna cut any ice. It's not gonna carry any weight. There's no, there's no place for that. So that will not be accepted. فَقَالَ الضُّعَفَاء لِلَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا That we... We followed you. Inna kunna lakum tab'an. We followed you. We did what you said. Now come. Are you people taking any responsibility? I said, no, no way. It makes no difference for us. There's no way of escape. I, I, uh, this, this ayat, these ayat of Quran are so heavy on the heart. We, we need to ponder. Even shaitan on the day of Qiyamah. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُذِيَ الْأَمْرُ when the judgment of Allah has been passed and the matters have been decided. Inna Allah wa'adakum wa'ad al-haq. Allah made you a promise. Wa wa'adukum, I made you a promise. I, I, I never stick to my word. I failed you. I, I, I contravened. I breached. I, I played the game. You fell for the scam. Wa ma kana li alaykum min sultan. Shaitan will say, but. I never forced you, I had no authority over you. I requested to you, I made a proposal. Da'awtukum fastajabtum li. I gave you da'awad, you followed it. Fala talumuni wa lumu anfusakum. Don't blame me, blame yourself. I can't help you, you cannot help me. You made shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I got nothing to do with you. There's adab coming now, get ready for it. Get ready for it. So if you have to make friends, companions, it's Allah and His Rasul. And the allegiance that will never fail is this allegiance. And the people of the dunya will be unfaithful, will be disloyal. Even when people are married, they are unfaithful. People's own children are unfaithful. Children plan their, plan their own parents' assassination. Wives plan, plan their husbands' assassination. So when we're living in an era where it's filled with dhaka and deception, we need to come out of this dhaka and deception 
and come to the arena of Allah and His Rasul. So dunya is unfaithful. They said there was a, a governor who was quite wise and intelligent and he loved his wife a lot and he was madly in love with her. So because of his attachment to her, he feared that after death she would marry somebody else. So he was so possessive that even after I die, nobody else should have her because she's mine. So whenever he explained to her and he div divulged his concerns to her and he complained to her, then she always consoled him and she said that I take an oath, I will never, I'll be faithful, I will never marry, I will after your death. The masla is a separate masla, you can get married. But uh, just for the story, to understand the deception of dunya, and she say, وَأَقْسَمْ to بِكُلِّ إِيمَانٍ I take an oath on my iman, I will not get married. لَا تَتَزَوَّجْ بَعْدَهُ بَعْدَ مَوْتِي She will never ever marry to any, get married to anybody. So he used to be restless and then one year it passed, one night he was uh, traveling and uh, he passed the cemetery and a woman was sitting next to the grave and the soil was wet. Means the janaza was performed and then they put water. The soil was wet. So she was fanning the cover. She was fanning the cover. فَعَجَبَ لِشَأْنِهَا He was amazed and perplexed. وَسَالَهَا مَاذَا تَفْعَلِ What you doing? What's happening here? Late at night you fanning the cover. She said, no, my husband just passed away. And uh, she made a qasam to her husband that until his cover does not become dry, until the cover does not become dry, the soil does not become dry, she will not marry and she already have somebody that's waiting for her. She already has somebody that's waiting for her. So she wants the, the soil of the grave to dry up to go marry her groom. So he was shocked and surprised and she gave it to him as a gift because the cover was dry. So he was astonished, he was amazed, he went back home, was, he was stunned and he had the, he had the fan in his hand and the wife looked at him and she, she asked him that uh, he's, he's, he's very, very restless. He narrated to her the incident. فَأَخَذَتْ مِنْهُ الْمِرْوَحَةِ She took the fan وَكَسَرَتْهَا She broke it. وَمَا زَالَتْ تَلْعَنْ She continued saying words and promising and saying women are like this and نِسَا لَسْنَكَ بَعْض Many women are different in a different categories of women and she's a very إِنَّهَا زَوْجَ الْوَفِيَ She's a very, very loyal wife. So she asked him, are you afraid that I'm going to get married? And again she re reassured him. Then time passed again and مَرِضَ الْحَاكِمْ مَرَضًا شَدِيدًا He became very ill and he was close to death. And uh, as he was in that closeness of death, it so happened that uh, on, on his last moments he reminded his wife that if something happens to me, you will not get married. So she consoled him and she said it's a covenant and a transaction and a agreed done deal. So he passed away at the time of sunset and uh, the wife, they were, they prepared the janaza, etc. People started coming to visit him. The funeral arrangements were being made and tabki alayhi bukaan shadida. She was crying a lot. And while she was crying, the Khadima came and she said that, that there's somebody at the entrance and he was going to visit the governor. When he heard he was sick, he rushed. He's a very close associate of the governor. He's at the palace door. And uh, as he made his way here, he got the news that he had become ill. So she told him to prepare the guest room and let him stay for the night and uh, he can perform the janaza and leave. So at late at night, the maid, the, the assistant came and she was panicking and she said, our guest, I think so, he's dying, he's on his last moments. So this lady went to the guest room and saw him 
and when she her gaze fell on him ra'at ajmal ash-shab ala wajh she seen the most handsome youngster he led endowed with beauty so and the lamp was by his head side but it seemed to her that the face his face was giving the lamp light that's the 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 the, the image she got of him that was illuminating from his face so he said i am among the last moments and uh, she started discussing and she said i lost my husband you lost your friend hal takunu li awn wa akunu lak awn let me help you and you help me he said i'm sick and i've uh, i've i've done i went to all the doctors and they've said that there's no solution and uh, inna ilaji I've only got one option. My my remedy is I have to eat the brains of a person that just passed away recently. She said, "Ana so alijuka, walau kana dawauka bein asere wa nahari. Whatever I need to do to find a remedy, I will do that. I will do that." So he said, "I can't ask you to do that." She said, "No, my husband had passed away, but uh, there is a solution." And uh, she said, "Be patient. I will come back." She went to the room where her husband was. She was trembling. She took an axe. She was going to hit the head of her husband. She was going to hit the head of her husband when he grabbed her hand because he hadn't passed away. He staged the whole thing, and the guest and the khadima were there behind her, laughing. And the husband told her, "Alam takuni al-mirwaha fi yadi tilka al-mar'a." Wasn't the fan in the hands of that woman? Wasn't she more merciful than you? That you are ready to break my head? She was just fanning the cupboard. So the woman heard this here. She fell in a shock. She fell unconscious, and she never got up again. So this is dunya. It's full with deception and disloyalty. The only being we need to be loyal to is to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The muttaqin are the loyal. May Allah give us the victory in our efforts. And the last prayer is the Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin.